Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, and you might know me from my own YouTube channel where I cover sim, management, city building, and strategy games extensively. Today, I'm here in collaboration with Paradox Interactive to show you the latest DLC for Surviving Mars, The Martian Express. There are a few stops on our journey today as we discuss the pros and cons of using trains, building and maintaining your train network, and establishing train lines. With no reason to delay, let's begin. While shuttles and shuttle hubs can do similar things and have other perks besides, your train network can be built and maintained with fewer and more easily attained resources. What's more, trains don't consume fuel and they require significantly less power. So whether it's the earliest days of your colony or after you're more established, there are many advantages to a genuine, bona fide, electrified two-car monorail. There are just a few downsides to using the train, and we'll explore them in a bit more depth in the relevant sections of this video. To put them quickly, first off, you can only build tracks on flat terrain and cannot have any elevation changes on a track. Second, cold waves will slow your trains down. They won't stop completely like dust storms do to shuttles, but you will see a reduced efficiency. And finally, colonists can die on the train, but don't let that distract you from all the benefits. Available right from the beginning, you're able to build stations and tracks on the surface of Mars to transport goods and people alike, though with the right research, you'll be able to build train networks underground and you'll be able to take advantage of green spaces to improve sanity during transit and you'll be able to get larger stations, safer tracks, and safer, faster, more comfortable trains as well. To establish a track and line, you'll need to first build at least two stations that you'll be connecting. Note that the starting station available to you can only have one track, while the large station can have up to four. Note as well that trains cannot pass through a station. They start at one, picking cargo and passengers up, and end at the next, dropping said cargo and passengers off. While you can daisy chain cargo using large stations as hubs, you'll typically want to plan your lines end to end, especially when your main purpose is transporting colonists as they will not transfer from one train to another. When placing your stations, make sure your drones are able to bring cargo to and from the platform. And if you want colonists to use the stations too, make sure residential domes and destination domes fall within the indicated radius. Colonists will not walk to a station from their dome if the station is too far. With stations in place, you can start laying down the tracks by starting at one end, navigating through the terrain holding shift, and clicking multiple times until you reach the end station. You must have both ends to commission the construction, and your track must be laid over flat terrain with no other structures in the way. It cannot go up and down ramps, and it cannot go over sheer cliffs or mountains. This is one of the greatest limitations of your train network on Mars. It can, however, go over cables and under pipes, allowing you to overlap infrastructure and save space. Once you've commissioned the construction of your track, any rocks in the way will first be cleared, and then your drones will bring concrete to the construction site. The amount of concrete needed is determined by the length of the track, and unlike power cables and pipes where each segment is built separately, the track is counted as one entity. This means all the concrete and all the construction can happen at one end or the other without needing to supply drones along the length of the track, building each piece one step at a time. This is hugely convenient and helps get your tracks up and running more quickly. If you ever want to demolish a station, be warned. You'll first need to demolish the entire track that it's connected to and only then will you be able to demolish the station. This can be a costly endeavor, so make sure you plan your tracks and their purposes out before construction begins. You'll also need to be quick to respond should calamity strike and a segment of track gets destroyed. Though trains can still move from station to station when maintenance is required at either end, a destroyed track section means any train on the track will be stuck in place until the track is repaired. If the train in question is carrying passengers and you're not quick enough, they might die in transit, proving that whether you're on Earth or not, the commute can really suck the life out the of you. Has died. With the track built, you'll need to build some trains to use them. Keep in mind that you'll be able to assign more trains to a single track the longer it is, and with a bit of trial and error, you'll find the perfect number of trains to ensure a fluid movement of goods and colonists alike. Once a train has been built, you'll assign trains to tracks to get them going on that line. Small stations only have the single option, but large stations will have multiple lines leading to multiple destinations for potentially different purposes. Your control can get a bit more granular too, 
Individual trains can be told to carry either liquid or solid cargo, and the track as a whole can be switched between cargo only, passenger only, and carrying both at the same time. If carrying both at once, each train will have two separate cars, one for passengers and one for cargo. Each station can also be told which resources it should store, and of those resources, which it should send away, which it should not, and which it should try and maintain a balance using its own judgment and the minimum target amount you've set across the board. The Martian Express is a great new way to get workers and resources moving around your colony on Mars. Before the shuttles start buzzing around the skies, eating up precious fuel and polymers, the humble monorail can be an absolute game changer for the lives of your colonists, allowing them to live in a vibrant dome full of life and culture and with a great vista, traveling to work in less pristine locations, seeing a few sights along the way. It allows you to move goods around faster than ever, staying on top of repairs and new developments alike. And above all, it gives you a new set of toys to play with as you try surviving Mars. Remember to subscribe to this channel and tune in tomorrow as we return with some of the great new sights and sounds your colonists will be able to experience on their transit as we take a look at two more packs coming to Surviving Mars, the future contemporary cosmetic pack and Revelation Radio.